Let us pray. Holy Spirit, continue to speak to us today. Continue to open our hearts today. Continue letting us hear your message today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. A man died and arrived at the pearly gates ready to see St. Peter. But when he got there, St. Peter wasn't there. And all he saw was a computer. When he walked up to the computer, the screen instantly turned on. And it said, welcome to www.heaven.com. Please enter your username and your password. Well, the man was taken aback. He had no idea what his username or password was going to be. So he started looking at the screen on a possibility, and he saw the little link that's on so many sign-in pages. Uh, forget your password, click here. So he did. He clicked there. And it said, please enter your email address and then your birth date and your death date. So the man started typing, and he typed in both the email and his birth date and his brand new death date. After just a second of it thinking, it said, we're sorry, we did not find anyone who matches that description in our system. If you would like to, click here to create an account. So the man kind of shook his head, getting frustrated. He clicked, yeah, uh, create an account. Then he started to see what he had to do. He had to fill out four whole pages of information to sign up on this account. All the information that we always have to do, plus more. And when he finished all four pages, he saw down at the very bottom, before he could hit sub, uh, submit, he had to actually read the user agreement and then click that he read it. So he read it all. He hit click. He hit the... Um, the uh, uh, OK user agreement, and then he hit submit. The computer thought for a second, and then it popped back up, popped back up that said, we're sorry, this site is experiencing te technical difficulties. Please try again later. At this point, the man was about, he, I mean, he was crying at this point. So he said, maybe I can just start over, and he hit the back button. And then he saw it. Welcome to www.hell.com. Please enter your username and your password. What a welcome this man had. I don't think the poor man felt welcomed at all at www.hell.com. Which is kind of sad since the welcome you receive, even in hell, is super important. And welcoming and being welcomed is what Jesus was really teaching us. Anyone, this is what Jesus says, anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Whoever welcomes a righteous person will receive a righteous reward. And then the one that I like the most. Whoever gives to the little, these little ones who are my disciples even a glass of water, they will not lose their reward. You know, these words come directly after last week's scripture. If you remember, that was when he was talking about uh, you have to leave your family, you have to carry your cross, you have to give up your life. Those words had no comfort. Those words had no welcome. They were harsh, and there was division. And it was talking about the division that the early Christians would receive. But these words, these words end the section, and it's where Jesus gives us comfort, and it promises us a welcome and acceptance. Because when, not if, we are welcomed. We are welcomed with God. Jesus, however, was not just talking about the welcome we would receive, but he was also trying to tell us that we needed to welcome, uh, welcome others as well. It is vital that, that uh, 
it is vital that we welcome people, that we welcome people with Jesus and with God, that we welcome people the way the prophet, uh, that we would a prophet or a righteous person, and that we are the ones who will welcome someone enough to give them a glass of water, even the little disciples. But how do we do that? How do we truly welcome other people? It begins by not falling into the worst mistake the church has ever made. And it's one that keeps getting made over and over again. And that is only welcoming the perfect people. Even when the church doors are not closed because of a virus, too often church doors are closed to a lot of people. Let me ask this question. Even at Hope Presbyterian, what would happen if a sinner or a tax collector or a prospect a prostitute came through the doors to come and worship with us. How would our welcome for that person be? How would it look different than if a millionaire in a very nice outfit with his perfect family walked through the door? What would we do if the millionaire and his family said they wouldn't want to worship with them and pointed to that sinner or tax collector or pro, uh, prostitute, who would we welcome? The church far too often has picked the millionaire and his family every time. We've closed our eyes to the very people that Jesus wanted us to welcome. We wanted to make sure that they fit in with our, uh, our group of people. We wanted to make sure that if somebody else came in, we were a respectable-looking church. And so we make the mistake of not welcoming, of not giving the water to the little disciple. And how welcoming would we be if somebody came in with a Black Lives Matters t-shirt on and came in and sat down? Or maybe how welcoming would we be if somebody came in with an All Lives Matter t-shirt on? I think most of us feel more comfortable with one or the other, but we are called to welcome all the disciples of Christ not just those we want to, not just those that we feel comfortable with. To truly welcome people means we have to leave our comfort zones for other people. And then there is this question. How do we welcome the younger generations that we say we want? Maybe it's a young couple. Maybe it's a young family. Maybe it's just a 20-something who's single who comes in off the street. This actually happened at at my church, uh, one of my previous churches that I pastored in. So a young couple came in and they sat down. And one person who I truly love uh, went went over to him. And I thought, oh, they're going to say hi. But no, what happened was that young couple that came in walked in with their coffee And the woman came over to them and said, sorry, we don't allow food or drinks in the sanctuary. The young couple was nice enough to stay for the whole service, but they never came back. Do we love our building more than we want to welcome people? Are we willing to change so young families feel comfortable? Are we willing to not judge a person who is playing on their smartphone or tweeting or blogging during the sermon? Or are we open to hearing the complaint when someone comes up to us and says that our internet is not very good and that it is almost impossible to log into? 
for most of us, we would say coffees, phones, and inter internet don't sound like that big of a deal. But for many people my generation and below, it is a very big deal. And hearing what they want is a vital part of welcoming them. To welcome people of any age, but especially the younger generations, we need to put that phrase away and never use it again. And that phrase is one that has been uttered in every church, even if it's only three days old. And that is, we can't do that because we've always done it this way. We need that, that idea of we've always done it this way before has to get gone. It has to leave the church and never come back if we want to welcome people. And it's one of the hardest things we are called to do as the body of Christ. Because we have to put our comfort zone away so others can feel welcome. Now I need to tell you, this, is, this sermon is not necessarily geared at Hope Presbyterian. Although I wouldn't be surprised if a few things hit a little home. But since I've been here, I have felt nothing but welcomed. I have felt wanted, and the hospitality that has been shown to my family and I has been tremendous. And I want all of Largo to know that. I want all of Clearwater to know of this hospitality. I want every person who drives past our church and sees our sign or who actually makes it into our sanctuary, I want them to feel as welcomed as me. So that way they will come to fall in love with this church family. And that is what I'm talking about. That is how we need to be as the family of Christ. So I know what some of you are thinking. Just in my announcements, I said we're not going to be worshiping in person anytime soon. I'm hoping most of you all got your letters about that as well. And I know many of us are very upset about it. But then the question becomes, all that I've been talking about is really about how we welcome people into our worship service. But if we're not doing in-person worship, how then do we welcome people? How then do we give the welcoming that God is asking for us to do? The thing is, we can be the church in, this, in our new digital space. We can invite people who need to hear the word of God to watch with us. We can, uh, our loved ones who don't have a church family, we can invite them to watch the daily devotions if they think that, if you think that would be less, um, less stressful than our worship service. Uh, we can come to the Tuesday or Thursday check-ins and invite them to come too, just to where they could start meeting some of the people in the church. We can invite them to be a part of our congregation even when we're not doing it in person. We can also be the church. We can also welcome people off the computer, even during this time. From day one, the people who I've been most concerned about during this pandemic in our church are the people who don't use computers or smartphones, who really can't uh, get on their phone and watch the service or be a part of the service that we're experiencing right now. I want them to still feel like they're part of the church and we can welcome them just as if they were a new member. We don't have to just welcome new, we can welcome all the people if there's somebody who you've been missing, pick up the phone and call them. If there's a person who you just haven't had a, call, a hug and you desperately want to hug them, call them. Let them know how much you, they mean to you. Welcome them into your heart. You can also write to people. 
it's weird for me to say that because I haven't actually, I really am not very good at writing notes, handwriting. I am much better on a computer. But I know many of you all are like, computers are evil. Uh, stick with stationary. So do it. Take some stationary. Write to 10 people. 10 people in our congregation who you miss. Let them know you're thinking about them. Let them know you miss them. The important part is to let people know. That is just as much of a welcoming uh, uh uh, uh, just as much of a wel welcoming action as rolling down the red carpet for someone who's new or a visitor. The early Christians, the ones from last week's um, scripture reading, they must have felt like there was no one to welcome them. And sadly, there are still people who feel that way today people in our own congregation or people who might be looking for a new congregation. Let us welcome them. Let us know that they're wanted. Let us know that we see Christ in them and that we are, in, we are welcoming Christ and them into our beautiful family. Amen.